Hello and welcome to Reviving an Idler. So this week I've got a little bit lucky in my search for some oak. I've got a friend who got in contact with me uh, regarding a downed oak tree and uh, I'm now currently standing under the living part of it and I'm just going to show you around uh, this tree just now. It's got some lovely bends in it. It's been down for about six months or something so it's going to need a bit of drying out but it's certainly nice to see, it's certainly nice to touch and it's local so it's come from along the road so there's something lovely about knowing that I'm putting a little bit of fife back into the boat and um, that was built in in the south of England and we're putting a bit of fife her new home back into her before she hits the water again and that's going to be lovely it's something I think I'm really going to appreciate a couple of years down the line when I'm I'm sitting there in the floor bunk or something looking up at a, a bit of wood maybe a wee bit of a dram looking up and going that came from home that came from a couple of miles up the road for me you know something really nice about that it's a nice feeling beautiful spot as well i want to remember this so we're just going to have a wee inspection of it here and i'm not going to lie you couldn't have chose a bonnier spot for it my goodness beautiful We're just wandering around the, towards the back of the tree there, so you see it's side of the uh, the oak split and come down. It's a good size as well, it's a lot bigger than I was expecting. Lots of nice curves I'm seeing already. That's a really nice looking one right there. It's got a nice couple of knees out of there. Potentially a futtock, we'll never know until we get it opened up, but it looks pretty good to me. see she's she's split down here and one side's come down in the weather looks like white oak to me hopefully there's some people out there who know better but it looks like white to me and i love it the tree's not dead so we're getting all this wood essentially for free thank you mother nature because this side of her she's living on There's the back side of that bend. That's bonnie, we'll have that one for sure. That's a nice long sweep down here as well. Might be a wee bit of twist in that though. Won't know until we open it up, but it's it's kind of rolling from the main trunk and rolling out and rounding up. So it might be a bit of twist in that, but we could get lucky with that one. Oh, nice curves up here. Yeah, I reckon we're going to get what we need. We'll get all our knees for sure, I think. And maybe get a breast hook or two. And if we're very lucky, out of this straighter section, we might get, we might get some deck beams out of this, if we're lucky. But there is also this lovely long, almost 90 degree bend right there. I'll step back a wee bit, you can see it a bit better. Just coming in there like that. That is a gorgeous bit of wood. It's about a foot thick, a foot and a half thick. Maybe even thicker. I mean, you could get... You could get something really useful out of that, potentially. Might be a wee bit knotty in there, in that back corner, but right on the inside might be okay. Get a stern post or, or something potentially out of that. So good morning, the aim for today is to nip up the road and have a look at that oak tree. Um, we've already given it the once over, see what we're roughly dealing with. Uh, today's mission is to get the saws involved. So we've got my bag of tricks, whoppers, saws, helmets, PPE, all the rest of it, pile of camera and whatnot, and we will uh, nip up the road, we're going to cut down what we can, take what we can today and uh, bring it back to the workshop to investigate it. The things I'm looking to try and get out of this tree are primarily knees, uh, ideally an abre a breast hook or two. If I can get some uh, futtocks or some nice gentle bends that I can make some futtocks or sawn frames from, that's what I'm after as well. 
Uh, secondary aim would be to try and get some long lengths that we can use for deck beams. Um, however, I think that's probably a little bit unlikely. So the tree, as we've seen from the, the previous clips, uh, has got a nice sort of straightish uh, trunk section and then there's a couple of big bends coming off that. Now we know from looking at that, the, the bulk of that tree is sitting on those big bends, so I don't think we're going to be able to get at those today. However, there are a couple of nice tighter bends uh, and some smaller stuff as well, which we'll get at and be able to uh, take home and investigate it properly. Things we'll be looking out for uh, is one, the species. We want to make sure that we're dealing with a, a, a species of oak that we can actually use in boat building. Um, for people who have maybe watched other videos, we'd be dealing primarily with white and red uh, oak. Now, red oak is fairly rare in the UK, but it has been known to be planted on a few estates and plantations and stuff, so we have to just make sure that we're definitely dealing with a, a white oak species. I'm also looking to make sure there's no serious disease, rot, twisting, making sure there's not uh, too many burrs, knots uh, and uh, weird checks or anything sort of untoward in the, in, in the plant as well. So. Enough wittering, um, I've not got my wittering hat on, so let's uh, get uh, loaded up and head on up the road and uh, check out this tree. So first things first, we are going to try and make it as safe as we can, make sure we're not going to do anything dangerous and hurt ourselves. Uh, and we're first. First branch we're after trying to take is that lovely curve in there. short as the keeper that was on the ground with me today got a call and I had to nip away a little bit earlier than expected so we've just taken home a couple of bits before we go back and take some of the bigger stuff so what we've managed to get is a big bend like this now I expect a fair bit of knotting and all kinds of weird stuff going on in there but you never know we might get lucky and get a bend out of that but I think this trunk going in there is going to give us some issues this bit here is actually relatively straight, one or two big knots in there, so again we might not quite get what we want out of it uh, on the inside there, but you never know. Up at this bit here, this big bend there, I expect we'll manage to get something nice out of that turn there though. This one here was that lovely bend that we saw in the first early on, and I think we're definitely going to get what we need out of that. And that should definitely give us at least two uh, futtocks running in there but we're not going to know for sure until we've managed to take a couple of shavings off and have a look at the grain on the inside. Now these were two of the more accessible bits of wood and um, there's much more there that we can play with but it's much uh, more involved process to get at that stuff. Um, the tree is obviously toppled over but it's being supported by its lower branches and the stuff we need is doing the supporting basically. So we're going to have to take the whole tree apart um, and take the whole thing down in order to get to the pieces that we really want. So it's a much more involved, much larger pro uh, process um, and it's got a lot of inherent risks as well. So we have to really think a bit carefully about what we're doing if we uh, are to get those bits of wood that we want. In the meantime, however, 
we'll just uh, take uh, a couple of slices off them so we can start to see the, the grain direction as well. Morning, so it's the next day and I am going to take a couple of slices off these um, lumps of wood just now just to have a look on the inside. Obviously it's going to be a fairly rough and ready job. We're just going to plug it on the ground, put a couple of braces either side so it can't topple over one or the other and I'm simply going to run the saw down one side just taking a slither off the top and I'll probably take another slither off, slither off the other side so I'm left with a sort of slightly squarer cross section and then I can look down into the log. So obviously, excuse the ice it's formed overnight, so that's my largest bit of usable wood there in the cross section going across that way. That's obviously your sat wood, your heartwood. You can only really use the heartwood uh, for boat building anyway. I think if I take a slice off there and a slice off there all the way along the length I should be able to get a better understanding of, of the way that heartwood is moving. Is it twisting out to one side? Is it, you know, is it getting larger or smaller in the middle? That'll help me judge how much uh, usable wood I actually have here. The ground's frozen solid, so bars necessary. So if we come round and have a look at this bit of wood First thing we see is obviously there's a couple of knots Big one there, big one there Not particularly ideal but we may be able to work around that and if they're going into the uh, futtocks um, we can deal with a little bit of knotting in there as well Assuming it's not too bad, although that does look like an alive knot, which uh, may cause us issues. Other side, looks a bit cleaner, a little bit nicer. First thing we notice here is we've got a very nice clean grain running right the way around the bend, like we hoped we would. Hope we'd see something like that. It does look, however, like the heartwood in this particular limb is quite a... Uh, a narrow bit. Even in, so if you look at the end here, that would have been something like that shape. And we had to, just to keep the angles flat, we've had to come out a little bit shy of that. So if you imagine that's the, so you imagine it was that thick there, it means the heartwood is running sort of that direction, sort of back into the into the middle because we've got this area here of excuse me because we have this area here of sat wood so if that would have been raised the trunk is going back and shrinking into there before coming back out of there so it effectively means we've got a kind of curve like that to the heartwood but it's also going like that which uh, limits what we can do with this unfortunately 
we may be able to get a knee or something out of there but I don't think we're going to be able to get what we want out of that full piece anymore. I'll take another slice off um, and we'll see what we're looking at from there but I think realistically we're not going to get a futtick out of this piece of wood unfortunately. So, we have managed to cut out the bulk of the heartwood of this lump of oak and uh, grain's looking quite nice. I think there's a small chance I might be able to get uh, perhaps one uh, futtock out of it. Uh, now, a, a futtock is one section of a sawn frame. If I can't get a part of a futtick out of it, there's definitely enough going to be in there to get at least a knee, possibly even two knees out of that, maybe just getting rid of, of that section there. Now moisture content wise it's going to be pretty high, my meter is telling me it's 26% which is ridiculously low for uh, green oak so I'm going to assume that it's uh, because it's still frozen or because it's very very cold and we're getting skew readings so I've taken a little section I'm going to bring that into the house warm that up and then meter it again now you can essentially say that this is going to be boxed heart because we're going to be working away at this this core section so if I can find so that would be the equivalent of your box heart so you've got your middle of the branch in there and you've got these rings working out from it which means as it dries uh, the widest circumference areas are going to dry the quickest and they're going to essentially pull apart in various, you know, as, as they shrink along the, uh, the grain lines uh, and that's how we get uh, major checks and cracks as it dries from the circumference out um, for boat building, boats are wet, they're always sitting in salt water hopefully, so why is having dry wood important? Well honestly it's not massively, what you need is you need wood that is going to be the same moisture content as your boat so you don't get too much uh, shrinkage or changing of shape. Now generally you want to season wood a little bit to allow you to see if it's going to dry twisted or show up any weird defects or any sort of checking or anything in there so you can really see it. But if you're careful, you should be able to use a bit of green oak in what you're doing. So for if I was to use this for a futtick of some sort, I'd have to be very careful because you're going to get shrinkage um, in all planes. That may result in me having a piece of wood which was cut to the correct size and shape and fitted perfectly, no longer fitting perfectly. Um, if we have a 10 centimeter rib, 10% on that, we're going to be left with a 9 centimeter. Um, rib, so that's a whole centimetre difference in what you had originally cut to size, so that's, that, that results in a big hole in your boat. So as long as I can make sure that this is going to stay the same moisture content as the wood around it, um, it's no issue, I don't have to worry about laying this up for years and years and years, as long as it's going to be around about the same moisture content, but what I can do is I can cut it to within a safe parameter of the size I want it to be. So if I was to cut this 20% oversize, um, that should result in having a ample spare wood so that when it does dry, um, there's going to be a little bit more than I need that I can then plane down because it's bound to, to warp and change shape slightly. So it allows me a little bit extra to plane and make it look pretty as well. So we'll keep knocking little bits off this collection of wood, see what we've got and then make some decisions based on what we see uh, as to what we're going to do with it. It is a handsome bit of wood and I will be using it in the boat somewhere but maybe not for what I'd hope to use it this time. We've got some of the wood out here, um, it's been 
It's been cut into large sections to allow it to dry and um, also to allow me to have a look at what's going on inside of it. And it's still very heavy, it's still very wet obviously, it's uh, drying very very slowly. Um, even with that however, we've already developed quite a large check running through one of these pieces here. I'm moving a bit closer so you can see that. Large check running like that and it looks like it's coming out in this area here. So this whole area around this knot has basically just kind of exploded down this end. Now at the moment that's not such a big issue. I was hoping to get a large knee out of this but even a large knee out of a piece of wood is only really going to be about an inch thick like that. It's not going to be particular, it's not going to be the, the whole length of this. But even so, it's a bit of a shame that I was already seeing that checking. However, it is in the sap wood, the out outer wood. But the actual heart wood itself, so far, is looking quite good on that. So hopefully we will still manage to get something out of this. Pop back to the side and have a look at the other bit. So this is... So this is a little bit of a larger chunk. We're maybe talking about four inches across um, in thickness and it's drying out quite nicely already. So we're starting to see the grain pattern emerging in there. And as we, as we thought, we are getting that rolling sort of lumpy, wobbly road running through it, but it's still running at the moment straight enough to get something usable out of it. See that lovely grain just running around the corner there and down. So hopefully once I've planed this down, taken a good inch or so off that, once it's dried out a bit more, get to see what we can actually do with that. But I think we'll be able to use that for something for sure. Um, which is great. That's kind of what I wanted to achieve. I wanted to be able to get something from home into the boat. So, so that's great. We'll definitely get something out of that one. And we've got this little Y piece here as well. Now, I had hoped to get a, a, a breast hook out of that, and I still think there is a chance of getting a breast hook. At the moment, Idler has uh, one breast hook on the gunnels where they meet the stem head, um, and the bilge stringers, they run in, but they are just sitting loose at the end. There's nothing holding them together. I would like to reinforce that a little bit by putting an extra little block in there, and I think that this is going to be at the moment, oversized to do that job, but once we've planed it down and gotten to see what we've actually got with the grain doing, I reckon we'll be able to get a nice little knee out of that that will be able to join those two bilge uh, stringers together, hopefully. Feeling that, there's definitely going to be uh, enough for um, something usable out of this piece of wood. So at the moment, we are not looking at getting any more of that wood just now. Uh, I'm going to worry about dealing with uh, these bits of wood first. I'm still chasing down the oak order, so I'm hoping to get that in the next uh, week or so. Um, this is about mid-February just now, so I'm hoping to get this uh, shortly, and I will be able to carry on throughout March. So that's the plan. all we've got time for this week. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Sorry there's not been too much boat building going on but we've been using plenty of saws and it's really good to have a chance to get our hands on some real live fife oak as well so that's been lovely for me. Hopefully if we're lucky we'll get on to the ribs next time. Um, I'm still hoping to get hold of the oak this month and um, if I can't we'll move on and we'll be looking at something else that will be a surprise episode for you. Thank you for continuing to like, share and subscribe. I really, really appreciate it. Again, it's a, it's a real drive um, for the project and I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos and comment and be part of the old girl's story. So thank you again for that. Much appreciated. And uh, for now, take it easy and I'll see you next time.